Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. I really had to put this quick video together. I'm sorry I did. And this was following a conversation with a representative of 2K by the name of Elizabeth. You may have heard of her. She was involved in some controversy in regards to Bioshock 2, if I recall correctly. But whatever the case, that's not really what I'm interested in talking about right now. It's to do with the idea of FOV. And this is something that honestly has got to be resolved. I feel that a line has to be drawn in the sand at this point on this particular issue. So FOV, field of view, is quite simply the size of an area that can be viewed on a display. That's basically what it is. So a field of view of 60 means that you can see everything within a 60 degree cone of your eyes. Yeah, A field of view of 90 means that you can see everything within a 90 degree cone in front of your eyes. It's pretty much as simple as that. And human beings have a fairly large field of view. We are predators, we have front-facing eyes, but we can still see a fair amount. A single human eyeball has the approximate field of view of about 95 degrees out. And the simultaneous field of view, the total visual perception you can get of an area, is about 160-ish degrees, give or take. Obviously, it varies from person to person. So, you can see quite a lot, honestly, in total. You've got your peripheral vision, all sorts of stuff like that. That's why you can see stuff coming from the side. Those of you who've played games like Modern Warfare 2, or have even seen footage of games like Modern Warfare 2 or 3, will be aware that seeing stuff coming from the side cannot be done, because you are basically wearing... It's like wearing two pieces of cardboard either side of your eyes that deliberately block off your per peripheral vision. And you might think this is for competitive reasons, it really is not. Indeed, PC FPS for the longest time has allowed a change in field of view. A prime example would be a Battlefield Bad Company 2, which allowed you to push the FOV to ludicrous levels. Now, I would like to give a demonstration of limited field of view in a video game versus not so limited field of view, a more comfortable field of view. So this is Serious Sam 3, and I am setting it to 65 FOV, which is the same field of view as Modern Warfare 2. So we're going to have a look at that. Okay, so that's what you can see in 65 FOV. Now, because of course this is a proper PC game, I can change the FOV, and I'm going to change that FOV to 90. 90 is a more reasonable field of view for those using a 16x10 monitor. It is a more comfortable field of view, and as you can see, it allows you to perceive significantly more of the game. So this is 65, this is 90. 65, 90. I think the difference is fairly obvious there. Now, from a gameplay perspective, this is optimal because it allows you to see more of your environment, which is great because it allows you to pick out more targets, it allows you to be more situationally aware. Now, if this were the only reason behind having a larger FOV, then I could understand not having it in your game because honestly, that's not really a big deal. It's okay if you restrict your player that way because you don't want them to have that kind of situational awareness. However, there is a more important factor, and that being the comfort of the player. Many of you may have noticed, and I am one of the people afflicted by this, this is a very, very common thing indeed, that if you are playing a game on a monitor, particularly a large monitor, and you're sitting at a reasonable distance away, as recommended by pretty much everything on the planet, you'll be sitting there playing your game, and you will get headaches, you will feel perhaps nauseous, you will feel lightheaded, it will be an unpleasant playing experience if you are playing in a narrow field of view. Because, let's be honest, it's not natural you're not supposed to see that limited amount. It's like having tunnel vision all the time, and your brain doesn't like it, and it interprets those images, and it can give you a headache, it can give you unpleasant feelings. Now, on a television, this is not so much of an issue because you are sitting away from it. That is absolutely fine, but you do not sit away from a monitor. Ergo, most PC gamers that I have spoken to, or indeed do know what FOV is, prefer a wider field of view. Now, as far as I can tell, my preferred field of view is between 90 and 100. I can live with 80. 80, I think, is the minimum that I can live with. Anything lower than that, I will actually start to have issues. But around 90, 95 is a pretty good value, and I'll tend to game on 95. I would go as far as to be a little controversial here and say that customizable FOV is actually a bigger deal than colorblind options. And before you come and strangle me for that, I have to say this simply because more PC gamers are affected by narrow FOV and it makes their playing experience less pleasurable as a result than are actually affected by colorblindness. 
That does not mean that we should have one, not the other. We should indeed have both as standard. Now, why am I telling you all this more to the point? Well, allow me to explain. I've been playing two games this week, both of which are affected by this issue, and I've been doing so for coverage on this channel. One of them is Gotham City Imposters. The other is The Darkness 2. Now, The Darkness 2 has had a response from 2K Elizabeth. 2K Elizabeth is the head of community for 2K, and 2K are, of course, the publishers of Darkness 2. She was responsible for relaying messages to and from the developers, as well as various other tasks, and she claims to speak for the developers. One day ago, she posted the following post in response to the thread on the 2K forums concerning anti-aliasing and FOV specifically the lack of FOV options. The FOV in the Darkness 2 is locked. There is no option to change it. The quote is as follows. Hey guys, the FOV is fixed for a reason, mainly due to the demon arms, which are over your shoulders. Really? <laughs> the demon arms are over my shoulders. Well, I hadn't noticed. This FOV made sense given how they worked. Done. That's it. That, that is the full explanation. Now, I got into a discussion with her on Twitter. And she tried to defend the decision, which is, of course, her job, so I don't really blame her for that. You can read the entire thing over at her Twitter if you so desire. It's fairly easy to find her Twitter. It's linked all over the place. It's at Dahanese. It's D-A-H-A-N-E-S-E. -E. If you read through that, you will find the information, the conversation with me and all of the explanations right there. Before, I, I'm not, I shouldn't even have to say this, but please do be respectful. This person is only doing their job. It's as simple as that. However, the fact remains that she has made a statement as a representative of the company and by proxy, of course, the developer, since she works for the publisher, that you cannot have a higher FOV because it would present technical challenges with the demon arms. Now, technical challenges, what does that actually mean? Well, when you force high FOV in certain games, you see certain artifacts more often than not. You see some very odd issues. For instance, sometimes the game doesn't actually render the arms as long as they need to be or at a large enough angle because the game isn't designed to support that. So you're going to see some weird stuff. So one might assume that with the variety of attacks that the demon arms can do in the Darkness 2, that having a wider FOV would cause a bunch of issues. So what I decided to do was to use a jury-rigged setup in order to prove that this was not the case. So what I'm using here is something called Widescreen Fixer, which is a test version of a program using a test profile designed to force the Darkness 2 into a wider FOV. And using this program, I've been able to add 30 degrees of vision to the default FOV. What you're going to see is very much squashed up footage. It is squashed because Widescreen Fixer is forcing the program to do something which it is not designed to do. It is not natively supported. It would have to be coded in, which is what I would expect from any PC FPS. I believe that is a standard feature, as are other features like, say, full screen, windowed mode, resolution changes, key rebinding, and so on and so forth. So you will see this squash. That is not, this is not designed for play. This is designed for demonstration purposes only. I would not recommend using this program for play because it is a test version and as such can cause instability and crashing, as well as it looking rather weird. All right, this is the Darkness 2's default FOV. You can see the demon arms over either shoulder. What I'm going to do is use a key modifier to force it into a wider field of view. You will notice the trash cans on both sides there, and there you go. You can now see much more of the game. What you will also notice is the fact that the snakes do not actually distort, aside from them looking a little bit squished. You can actually see more of each demon arm on either side. It is very clearly textured. You will also notice on the right-hand side there that in this enhanced field of view mode, there are no graphical artifacts or distortions of any sort. Unfortunately, this being a particularly unreliable and very much jury-rigged setup, this caused a crash. So here is it again. Now you might think, oh, well, the, the obvious reason that they can't do FOV is because it crashes. Well, no, actually. This is simply because I'm forcing the program to do this. It would be very easy to support this by the looks of it. You will notice no texture problems whatsoever, no issues with the arms, and indeed, I'm using the left arm right there, and I'm able to target and easily throw a object without any issues whatsoever. Let's grab a few guys and see whether or not there are genuinely any issues with the demon arm. Okay, so we've thrown him, no problem at all. Did you see any graphical distortion? No, let's do an execution move. One of the most obvious things where graphical distortion or indeed technical issues may occur. 
Let's try another execution move. Let's try one of these, for instance. There we go. No, there are, in fact, no issues whatsoever. So I would have to argue that the excuse that is being given by 2K Elizabeth is, in fact, not sufficient and is not actually the case. All right. So you can very clearly see that this works absolutely fine. It does look a bit squishy. I've just switched back there, forward, back, forward. Yeah, it works. There's the crash, of course, but the point is that there are... As far as I can tell, no technical reasons whatsoever to not include this. Here's the thing. In my opinion, the reason why this kind of thing is not included is due to a lack of respect for the PC market. We have seen a wide variety of different options, which as far as I'm concerned should be default, missed out of many games. 2K Games is by no means innocent of this, and indeed, a game they published by the name of Borderlands suffered a wide variety of PC issues, including FOV. To this very day, that game still requires, in order to get to a reasonable FOV, the use of a configurator tool which alters the config files to bind a specific FOV to the movement keys. <laughs> in fact, if you misconfigure that, if you jump, then the FOV suddenly changes. It's jury-rigged as all hell, and the PC version of that game has never been properly fixed. The Darkness 2 seems to suffer from a very, very similar issue to the point where, unfortunately, there doesn't appear to be a config option which would allow us to do the same thing that we did with Borderlands. So 2K is blatantly disrespectful in this regard, and I do not accept the argument that 2K are on the side of PC gamers. They very clearly are not, and indeed there are many other publishers which disregard the PC as a third wheel. Now, don't get me wrong. I understand that the PC is certainly third place on the majority of games, not all of them, but the majority of games when it comes to the three-platform release, the PS3, the 360, and the PC. The PC sells the least copies. However, this is not an excuse to not put in the required features in order to run the platform. Basically, as far as I'm concerned, it comes down to the product being fit for purpose. If the product is not fit for purpose, then certainly under UK law, for instance, if you were to go under the Sale of Goods Act, then any other product that was not fit for purpose, you would be entitled to a refund. In the case of PC games, this is not the case, but I would argue that something with a locked field of view that narrow is not fit for purpose if you were to play on a monitor, which of course the vast majority of PC gamers do. Other recent FPS such as Battlefield, such as Tribes Ascend, and such as Serious Sam 3 on the PC have indeed allowed the changing of FOV. And the argument that is made in the opposition of FOV, which is, oh, it gives some people an unfair advantage, is quite frankly ludicrous. And in the case of The Darkness 2 is in fact inapplicable, simply because this game is not a competitive multiplayer title. It is a single player game with a co-op campaign attached to it. There is no competitive element, ergo the changing of FOV would, assuming that it actually did give you a competitive advantage, and that is once again another debate for another time, not give you any advantage whatsoever in any meaningful sense. So this, as far as I'm concerned, is a game-breaking issue for any FPS released on PC. If you have a narrow field of view that causes me personally to experience discomfort while playing a game, then your game is not fit for purpose. And what I would encourage any PC gamer to do that is also affected by these issues is simply not to purchase any game that has a locked FOV and to indeed lobby for changes to be made in patches. I'm happy to say that after this discussion that I had with Elizabeth, I had one of the devs, in fact the creative director of Darkness 2, from Digital Extremes contact me and say that they have heard the concern and they are looking to patch in options very soon. The direct quote is on the screen right now, as you can very clearly see. So I would encourage everyone to hold them to that. I am, of course, thankful that he's come out and actually said that. That is a very positive piece of feedback, and it obviously means that Digital Extremes do understand the issue. I would certainly expect them to, bearing in mind that they were the co-developers of Unreal Tournament. One would assume that they understand PC shooters in that regard. However, once again, I would discourage anyone from purchasing a PC game that has a limited field of view and is a first-person shooter at full price. I think that stuff like FOV being locked is a disadvantage that would prohibit me from buying the game at full price under any circumstances, of course, unless I was doing it to inform you guys. Trust me, I will not be playing The Darkness 2 until this is resolved because it is uncomfortable for me to do so. Why would I do that? There are plenty of other games that I could be playing that do not make me experience discomfort. It's the kind of thing that, alongside intrusive DRM, 
might be a deal breaker for you or might be simply, well, you know what, I'm not going to buy it at full price because this isn't fit for purpose at full price. At a discounted rate, I would be willing to accept some of these flaws, but at full price, I would not. Personally, I would not accept these flaws at full price, and I would hope that many of you feel the same. So hopefully this has been a little bit informative, and as I said before, this is really a video that I've put together to prove that the statement from 2K Elizabeth was in fact not correct, and that changes need to be made in order to make the darkness a more pleasant experience for everyone. And I wouldn't be so disappointed if The Darkness 2 wasn't actually a game I wanted to play. I played the original Darkness on the 360, and I enjoyed it a great deal. I thought it was an absolutely fantastic shooter. It is indeed one of the few shooters that I've actually enjoyed on console, which is in itself a miracle, because I really do not enjoy console shooters. I do not like the form of user interface that is available there in terms of the controller. I feel that it is not an enjoyable piece of kit to use for a first-person shooter. So... I really want to play this game. I would like to enjoy it, but in its present state, I cannot. And as a result, I cannot, in all good conscience, recommend it to you guys. I'm hoping that they will resolve this issue. And with the promise there from the creative director of Digital Extremes, I would certainly hope that this will be the case. My name has been Total Biscuit, and this has been a little chat about Field of View. I'll see you next time.